Hey crew, I've got the key to this 22 Hyundai Santa Cruz. We are gonna take it for a drive, but first let's check out how it looks on the inside and outside. This is the range topping limited trim here, and you can tell that by the dark chrome in the grille, which does help subdue a rather in your face geometric design. There are premium LED daytime running lights flowing into that grille, and then we've got full projector LED headlights down low. This color is called Blue Stone. It's very peppy, kind of goes with the playfulness of the car. Wouldn't be my first choice, but that's okay. In profile, the Limited gets this set of 20 inch, also geometric designed wheels. These look cool. And there's texture for this black plastic cladding above that. The profile has a lot of cuts and creases, kind of like it. And there's a upswept C-pillar design there, flowing into a taper for the back half, kind of El Camino-esque. And the rear three-quarter, probably my favorite view. I like the Subaru Baja vibe back here. We've got these LED taillights that hedge in to the tailgate. Hyundai on the handle, Santa Cruz stamped into the tailgate. And we see these integrated bed steps. Those are pretty cool. On the limited trim, we get a power release tailgate. Hold this button, that comes on down. And there's an integrated tonneau cover that you can lock down here. Press this, slide it forward to reveal a rather short four foot bed, but they did get clever with the storage. You've got these two cubbies on the left and right hand sides. The limited trim gets LED bed lighting also on the right and left hand sides and up top. We've got these adjustable cleats here there is under bed storage, kind of like the Honda Ridgeline. Not super deep, but it is usable. And then getting up and into the bed, well, I'll say if you're six feet tall, you shouldn't have any issues from the sides, but because of how flared out the wheel arches are, if you are shorter, you're really gonna rely on the bed steps. But yeah, it's a very versatile, user-friendly bed. And with the damping on the tailgate, it's real easy to open it up and access it. Now let's check out that interior. Opening up and looking inside. Nice wide opening doors, by the way. Looking inside, the Limited gets these perforated leather seating surfaces, which feel superb. Pull this strap to access the under seat storage on both sections of the seats. We also have a back sliding glass piece if you need to bring in some two by fours from the bed. Mix of materials on the doors themselves, hard plastics up high, fabric, leatherette, and more hard plastics down low. Nice solid feeling door handle. Stepping in and sitting behind my own driving position at six feet tall, I do fit with about an inch to an inch and a half of knee room. And importantly, yeah, I've got headroom. And better still, the draft shaft hump is pretty low, so I can slide into the middle where I once again fit. We've got air vents for the back passengers, two USB-C ports down there. The only thing I will say is because of the design of the C-pillar, it does feel a bit cave-esque. And there's a light lip here, so you can get your feet caught on your way out. Be careful. Mm, somewhat hollow sound of that door close. Up front, we've got an eight-speaker Bose sound system, heating and ventilation for the front chairs, power adjustment for the driver's side, no power adjust or lumbar for the passenger side power sunroof moving in limited trims get this 10 inch digital gauge cluster with some mild reconfiguration there's a 10 inch touchscreen infotainment with apple carplay and android auto interestingly not wireless on the larger 10 inch display but it is wireless on the 8 inch screen a lot of gloss black here showing smudges and dust collection and some reflection there's a wireless smartphone charging pad down low two usb ports a more conventional style gear selector. I do like the flow of the dashboard design. Very handsome. And pretty reasonable storage in the center console. Is this a $40,000 cabin? Well, I'm not going to say it's luxury, but it does have pretty much everything you need. Now let's take it for a drive. All right, then let's fire it up. Nice little anim Okay, hey. Calm yourself. 
Don't get excited, Santa Cruz. We'll get to the sound system test later. Don't worry. We'll start by selecting our drive mode here, just behind the gear selector. Ooh, these are fun. We'll start out in normal drive mode, because even normal people need to be appreciated in slightly abnormal cars. The Santa Cruz stands out from the herd. We'll throw it in reverse here, which will bring up our, on the limited trim, surround view camera system. We've got the bird's eye view. We've got the wide angle backup camera with the trajectory lines. You can also look at a rear wheel shot or an overhead of the bed. Backing it on up. Into drive. We'll start things off with a turning radius test, as we do. Give us a nice wide berth here to see. Let's crank the wheel. Let's watch it on the camera system while we do it. And... All right, we do clear. Not as, not by as much of a margin as I was expecting for such a small vehicle. It's not the greatest turning radius. And as we pop out here, I'm going to do a brief horn test just to see what that sounds like. Here we go. Oh, that was underwhelming. Hey, listen to me. That's my translation of what that horn sounded like. No one is going to listen to you. Need to sound authoritative, Hyundai Santa Cruz. Stand up for yourself. You're just a small truck, but you've got things to say. Let's talk about the powertrains. The base engine in the Hyundai Santa Cruz is a 2.5 liter naturally aspirated four cylinder that only makes 181 horsepower, 191 horsepower and 181 pound feet of torque. However, that's the SE and SEL trims. In this SEL, or sorry, in this limited trim and also in the SEL premium, you're upgraded to a turbocharged two liter four cylinder. And now we're talking, it makes 281 horsepower and 311 pound-feet of torque. It's a huge bump up in power. And though I haven't experienced the base engine, I can only imagine it's going to feel pretty anemic by comparison. Looks like we might have a chance to do a 0 to 60 test here at this light, if I'm quick enough. Go into sport drive mode, come to a full stop, and sit and wait for the light. Either engine is going to be paired with an eight-speed automatic gearbox, but in the bigger engine, you get a dual clutch automatic. See how that shifts now. Zero to 60, up, oh, racing the Versa. And there's 60. Now, car and driver got the 2.5 turbo-powered Santa Cruz to 60. Ooh, another chance. In just six seconds, that is really quick. Another zero to 60, slight uphill, a little bit of tire squeal, and there it is, there's 60. So no slouch, this Santa Cruz with the turbo four cylinder. And that is channeled through all four wheels. The base engine, you can choose either front drive or all wheel drive. If you choose the base engine, you're going to be limited to a towing capacity of 3,500 RPM, 3,500 pounds. But if you go with the all-wheel drive and the larger engine, you have 5,000 pounds of towing. The only problem with that is that whichever engine you choose, you can't get the Santa Cruz with a hitch from the factory. You can order it as a dealer accessory, but no hitch and no trailer brake controller uh, suggest that Hyundai isn't thinking too much about towing for this vehicle, at least out of the gate. And yes, a small truck has paddle shifters. How do they work? Well, just pull a paddle and you enter manual mode. Shifts are pretty quick. Okay, that shifted before red line and before I therefore had a chance to pull the paddle. 
It's not the best. We'll do it one more time. Yeah, downshifts are quick. And, yep, shifts at about 6,000 RPM, though it states the red line is closer to 6,500. So, let's just hold the right paddle. Go back to auto mode. So, don't drive the Santa Cruz in manual mode. That is my takeaway. But, in auto mode, this is a peppy, peppy vehicle. Yeah, no complaints in terms of the performance, at least in a straight line, for the Hyundai Santa Cruz. And with that, let's move into smart drive mode and talk about how this vehicle cruises along. The fuel economy for the Santa Cruz with the 2.5 turbo is 22 combined from, I think, 20 or 19 city and 27 highway. If you go with the base engine, engine you can get 23 combined, so it's not much of a gain for a loss of a lot of power. The price differential, well, that's a different discussion. But the fuel economy being 22 combined is pretty good. It's better than the Honda Ridgeline, but it's worse than the Ford Maverick. We'll talk more about those competitors later. Cruising along at 60 miles per hour, I'm shocked the wind and road noise is very minimal in this cabin. It's extraordinarily well insulated. The suspension soaks up road blemishes expertly. This is a superb daily driver. The seats are also very comfortable. I can appreciate my lumbar control on the driver's seat. No such thing on the passenger side could mean that your passenger might get upset. But as a driver, this is a very comfortable way to motor down the road. You really would not be able to tell the difference between the Santa Cruz and the Santa Fe upon which it's based if you're just driving around. They both ride so, so well. How is the braking performance in the Santa Cruz though? Well, from 60-ish, oh, that is a squishy pedal. Didn't like that at all. I mean, yes, it brought us to a halt in a reasonable distance, but the feel of that pedal was marshmallow. It just squished. And that is not going to give you confidence as a driver that your vehicle will stop, even though, again, indeed it did. Uh, yeah, they gotta tune that brake pedal feel better. There was just about nothing up front in terms of initial bite. Another brake from 60. Yeah, squishy, does stop us, the turn in. Was pretty sharp, I didn't attack that corner too aggressively. I could feel the all-wheel drive system wanting to prioritize the front wheels there, so there was something of plow to the nose. But th yeah, that corner was okay. I didn't, I didn't mind that too much. Not a performance vehicle, and for that segment, did just fine. Now here at higher speeds, we're now at 70 miles per hour, the wind noise is up a bit, but still pretty darn good. And I think there's got to be some credit to the slightly rounded shape of the Santa Cruz for that minimal road noise. Visibility is also stellar out over the nose of the Santa Cruz. The roundedness of the hood allows me to feel like I can see clearly over the, over the top of the vehicle. And here is fine, there not so much because of the upturned shape of that rear window. You do have a blind spot. Thankfully, we've got standard blind spot monitoring. And on this limited trim, we've got some driver assistance features to play with. So I'll hit this button here and this one here to engage cruise control. You can set your following distance. Set it right there, move up to 70 again, and then I will hit, well, I've already hit this button here. Okay, so now we've got steering assistance. I'm not surprised at all that this steering assistance system crushes it because every Hyundai, Kia, Genesis vehicle I've ever used these systems on are always phenomenal. And I'm not just talking phenomenal in the mainstream segment, I'm talking phenomenal across the automotive industry. They stay perfectly centered in the lane. They don't require you to constantly touch the wheel, monitor it all the time. They just do their thing for a long time and take curves as we just experienced extraordinarily well. This is a huge win for me. Shall we do 
a wiper test. We'll pull back on the wipers here. Just one interesting. I mean, one was really all we need. So I'm gonna say the wipers check out. Short story on the Santa Cruz seems to be that it is a very agreeable daily driver. It has the safety features you need. It has the comforts. The cabin's well insulated. It's got the technologies you need, both, both with the digital gauge cluster and the infotainment. Towing capacity is available to you. You do have to do some aftermarket work to get the trailer brake controller. And from the uh, dealership, get your hitch. Payload acceptable at 1,400 pounds. Reasonably spacious cabin, usable bed, though smallest in the segment. Let's talk about the competition. The Santa Cruz starts at $25,200. If you want the bigger engine, you're gonna have to jump up to the SEL Premium. That's about $37,000. If you want the limited trim, the vehicle I have tested here, all the bells and whistles, you're looking at over $40,000. This one's 41,100. How does that stack up against the only other current on sale small pickup truck, the Ford Maverick? Well, the Maverick is a lot cheaper to start. Just about $21,400 to get you into the base hybrid engine Maverick that makes 191 horsepower, same as the base engine in the Santa Cruz. However, its fuel economy is incredible. 37 combined compared to the 23 combined for the base engine in the Santa Cruz. Towing capacity for that base engine Maverick isn't great at just 1,500 pounds, but if you get the larger 2.0 turbo four-cylinder, then you're looking at 3,500 pounds. Still not as much as this one, but the Maverick, importantly, has a trailer brake controller and you can get it with a hitch from the factory. The Maverick 0 to 60 in the 2.0 turbo is also somehow, though it only makes 250 horsepower, a tenth of a second quicker than the Santa Cruz. So it's 5.9 seconds, says car and driver. And the fuel economy, even of the 2.0 turbo, is still better than the 2.5 turbo in the Santa Cruz. I think its fuel economy is 25 combined. And if you're wanting to consider other vehicles, maybe you're okay with a slightly larger vehicle. The only other unibody truck is the Honda Ridgeline. That one starts at a, you know, much, much more expensive $38,000. It is using a V6, but it doesn't make any more power than this. It makes 280 horsepower. Its towing capacity is the same at 5,000 pounds, and its fuel economy is less at 21 combined. It is a larger vehicle, a lot more space in the cabin, more room in the bed. You can kind of do more with it. But if your idea is I want a small truck, it's between this and the Maverick. Not having driven the Maverick yet, I will have it in a week. So it'll be interesting. That POV driver view, I'll have had my time in the Santa Cruz to really compare it. Just looking at it, it looks more like a truck. And if that's more of your appeal, you want the look of a truck just in a smaller size, you might lean more towards the Maverick and the fact that the hybrid gets that ridiculous 37 combined MPG may also be very appealing to you. And if you really want something that looks unique and special, the Santa Cruz's styling is pretty cool. I'm attracted to it. I think it's interesting. Again, just not in this color. And the cabin is really very comfortable. It's a great daily driver. And if you need the usability of a pickup truck in a small size, this is a really great option. We'll have to see when I drive the Maverick, which is truly best. But guys, I hope you've enjoyed this POV driver view. If you did, please like, comment, and share the video. Subscribe to the channel. Hit that bell to get notified, and I will see you again next time.